Another product that I want to mention is the drain or flush valve. Now we're going to look at a little video and some pictures here of a flush valve that I've put on a zone that we are doing a big project on. And this was a zone of rotors, just your typical um, overhead irrigation for the backyard. And we have installed a section of drip irrigation to that with some hanging baskets and some drippers and pots and so forth. And since we have a cool season grass in this zone, we're going to want to run this irrigation, maybe just this zone, through the winter. So here in my area, it does freeze. It gets cold enough to freeze and burst pipes. And for the most part, we're going to be putting this drip irrigation on top of the ground and then just covering it with maybe two inches or so of mulch. So it's definitely in danger of freezing when we run the irrigation and then leave all of the pipes filled up with water. So we want a way for <clears throat> the water to partially drain down out of the zone so you're not leaving a fully um, charged pipe or a head with water in it that's going to bust open when the temperatures get down below freezing. So here we've located this at the lowest point in the zone and with the pictures here, you can see that there's a vacuum relief vent just overhead. So this is going to work really well as far as allowing the water that's left in the zone after the zone shuts off. This is going to allow water to drain out this flush valve into the pit that we've constructed. Now, what the reason that we want to do this and what, what we put it on here for is just for the freeze protection. But these can also be used to flush out debris. Let's say if you're using a, a well pump or a lake pump or something that's pulling up a little bit of sediment or sand or debris or something in that, we don't want those ending up in our little tiny orifices of our drip emitters. So this flush valve, every time the system shuts off or comes on in some cases, it will flush this stuff out of of it and then seal back up. The one that we're looking at here in the, uh, the video and the pictures, this particular device is from King Innovation. And if you're in the irrigation business, you will definitely run across products from King Innovation at some point. They have um, grease filled wire caps and, uh, you know, all kinds of different little, you know, uh, collateral products that we use. And this is one of them. But of course, you know, Netafim makes one, Rainbird, Hunter. Most of the manufacturers make these products. So if we're showing you one here from a, a different manufacturer, generally it's what I have on hand. And a lot of times that's the challenge when you're out in the field is, finding good products that you can actually get your hands on and not have to order online. Since the recession, a lot of supply houses now carry a smaller inventory, so you need to identify those parts that you like to use and make sure they're available for you or go ahead and order a bunch of them in so that you have them on hand because sometimes these smaller parts the flush valves, the vacuum relief valves can be hard to get your hands on. Not all suppliers carry those. Now, the way that you want to construct these is either uh, pointing to the side or even better is pointing down. And then you have to construct a pit underneath it. We want this pit to hold at least five gallons of water, if not more. And then when we uh, dig the, the pit up, we're going to fill it up with a, a rough, large drainage rock, which has some pore space or some space between the rocks that will allow this water to filter down in here and then eventually drain into the surrounding soil. Now the way I do it is once I get the rock in the hole, you'll see that I like to put a piece of plastic down over top of it and that keeps rainwater or irrigation water from filtering or sifting all of the dirt or clay down into that pore space between the rocks in our little pit. So I put a piece of plastic over it and then cover it back over with maybe four to six inches of dirt and that gives some area for your root zone from your grass to grow back or whatever you've got in the area and then you have your drain that's happening underneath and that water is draining out a foot or foot and a half down and not causing any problems any erosion or runoff on the surface.